I'm Dr. Vakar Ali. I'm at the First Coast Cardiovascular Institute, and uh, I will be talking to you today about lower extremity swelling or uh, edema in the legs. So as you know, the, there are several causes of swelling in your legs. I'm going to exclude the cardio, cardiac causes of it, and I'm going to focus mainly on the vascular and mainly on the venovascular causes of the leg pain so, and swelling. So there are superficial and deep veins that uh, drain the venous blood flow back from your legs towards the heart. I'm not going to talk about the superficial vein disease. Now, these are the veins that are under your skin, and uh, you can kind of see them. I'm talking about the deep venous system, and uh, that's going to be my focus of this talk. So when you see a patient with leg swelling, uh, you exclude, first of all, the cardiac causes of it, and assume that we have done that. So we will schedule the patient for a lower extremity venous insufficiency study, which is like an ultrasound. Once the study is done, we then look at the superficial and the deep veins. So I'm not talking about the superficial again. I'm going to focus on the deep venous system. In the deep venous system, uh, there can be several causes which will contribute towards swelling or painful lower extremity. I'm going to talk about unilateral or one leg as well as the bilateral or both leg problem. So you could potentially have compression of the iliac veins that drain into the IBC, which is the big vein in the center of your body. Uh, you can have compression with anatomical issues. Uh, the artery can be compressing it. Or you can have compression from previous procedures like uh, aorto biofem repair or aortic aneurysm repair or uh, previous back surgeries and repair from that. Especially in women, you can have them from inflammatory uh, pelvic disease, which causes uh, infections uh, and they're recurrent. So all of this can cause scarring around the vein and the vein can get compressed or actually become narrow. A uh, very more important cause of all this is uh, DVT or a deep venous thrombus, which is a blood clot in the deep vein of your body. So if you have a blood clot that has happened to you and you've had subsequent leg swelling, that vein can now become fibrose and scarred and can, com can get compressed or blocked up. So I'm focusing on that. So once we do the ultrasound, we... If we find reflux or high pressure in the veins, we then subsequently refer the patient for a venogram, which is an invasive procedure done in the cardiac cath lab where you actually give numbing medicine around the groin and you access the vein. You take a picture of the veins with the dye, so it's a contrast enhanced study. Uh, if you find a compression or a narrowing, then you treat that subsequently with an angioplasty or a stent procedure. So if you don't find that, what we typically do is we do an intravascular ultrasound. So there is also a scientific basis behind this because venogram in itself has a sensitivity of less than 50% in detecting a compression or narrowing of the vein. So it's not a 100% test. You need to put the intravascular ultrasound or the IVUS into the vein and actually measure the vein and see where the compression is. Once you've outlined that, then you proceed further, and uh, typically you uh, do an angioplasty with the balloon, and then subsequently you probably need to put a stent in because these veins do recoil back. So your goal here is to achieve uh, less than 30% residual stenosis once you've done the balloon or the stent procedure. Uh, this entire procedure takes about uh, an hour to do. It's done in an outpatient setting mostly. Uh, the patient can, in fact, walk out of the cath lab after a few hours of bed rest. And once they are discharged, uh, we follow them typically in the office in the seven, next seven to ten days. Uh, we also have an ultrasound follow-up for them. So we do a six-month ultrasound on the pelvic veins to make sure that the stent is patent. Uh, and typically, these stents stay patent for a long time. Uh, in, in terms of medications, we give the patient aspirin and Plavix, and we expect them to take that for about six months until the stent completely covers itself with the cell lining. So there's no issue of thrombosis or anything like that. A uh, patient can expect a little bit of pain around the access site, and uh, generally speaking, we, give, we see very nice results with uh, diminishing leg swelling over the next four to six weeks subsequent to the procedure. So the results are excellent. Uh, the procedure is safe. And it's done in the outpatient setting, and it's again, it's directed towards the deep venous system. And uh, these are the patients who 
have had the superficial system looked at and uh, they haven't had much relief and they still have persistent swelling in the leg or pain, those are the patients that uh, we deal with with the deep system. Okay, once again, this is Dr. Vakar Ali with First Coast Cardiovascular Institute Vein Clinic. Uh, please do visit our website.